Hi, my name is Maddie, and I'm the Junior Podcasting Championship in Isla Park, Idaho, and you're watching Channel 17. It's the sport's largest and most anticipated live event. It's a celebration of every angler's adventure. Whether it's in the backyard with your buddies, a bucket list trip realized, or an exotic journey beyond your wildest dreams. The inspiration for your next adventure comes from us. The execution is up to you. Alrighty, folks, it's Farrell once again with Crowd Surfing. Hey, we come down to the Egyptian Theater in Ogden for the uh, Fly Fishing Film Festival, which is hard for me to say, but uh, anyway, they're going to talk about fly fishing and they're giving away prizes and there's people to talk to. So uh, sit down, check it out. Alrighty, I'm here with Ben Nadolski. And Ben, can you tell me just a little bit about what it is we're doing down here? Well, we're here tonight uh, to screen the Fly Fishing Film Tour. And it's not only a film about fly fishing, but it's also a fundraiser to help support uh, the Ogden community and the greater Ogden community's rivers. All right, I am here, you know, I, I always ask everybody their name. I shouldn't have to ask you your name, but I'm gonna anyway. I am here with? Mike Caldwell. And you have kind of an important position in the city, do you not? Well, we're kind of uh, chief cook and bottle washer, but the less people know about me, I think the more successful we're being sometimes. So I'm a huge fan of Emerson's quote that what you do speaks so loudly you can't hear what I say. So we're trying to just work really hard right now. That's a philosophy I need to adopt. That's, that's great. That's awesome. All righty, I'm here with... Meredith Perkins. And Meredith, can you tell me a little bit about what it is that you're doing down here today? Sure. I work for the Department of Natural Resources in the Division of Forestry, Fire, and State Lands. Not the wildlife folks that are kind of taking over this event, um, but we're here promoting planting trees in the riparian areas. We're working with the uh, Ogden Restoration Project and planting trees along the river, shade for the fish, and overall water quality and water health promotion. So was, it, was this f filmed just strictly in Ogden, or is it all over, or...? Actually, this is a nationwide tour of a film that was created. Um, a lot of different venues host this tour. They host a screening. Um, people keep the proceeds for important causes for us in this community, our causes for our rivers, the Ogden River Restoration Project in particular, and hopefully turning our sights toward the future eventually through this event for both the Ogden and the Weber Rivers. So in, in, in between bottle washing, uh, you fly fish much? I do fly fish a little bit, but I'm, I'm shocked that they'd invite me here because I'm more of a backpacking bait fisher. So you put about five pounds of rice in your backpack and then you hope to supplement everything else you eat on big backpacking trips with what you catch. So I'm a little bit of a hook'em and cook'em guy, so I, I apologize. So how long have you guys been planting trees along the Ogden River for? You know, we're kind of new in the game. We didn't have a lot of participation at the beginning, but now that all the engineering has happened and all the, the river work has been done, that's really our time to come in and really start putting trees in the ground and ensuring that they're not going to flood and, and have lots of issues. So we're really starting the main part of our project now for the next couple of years. Well, I kind of look dumb now, thinking it was filmed in Ogden. Is, it, uh, is any of it filmed at all in Ogden or just filmed all over the United States? Or None of it's filmed in Ogden. Um, it's filmed all over the United States, and in fact, it's actually filmed all over the world. So these are uh, different segments of fly fishing where people put together their own um, segment about different subject matter in fly fishing world, really high-level cinematography, adventure, you name it, it's in there. What we're talking about here tonight, this is phenomenal. I'm honored to be a part of what so many unique people have put together, and it is such an inspirational project. So you have to uh, get get a kayak. They have a kayak park. Is that, is that correct? What 
What is that about? I, I've seen it down there, but I've never seen anybody kayaking yet. We have three kayak parks. So, I mean, the, this river project is a transformational. We are looked at in the nation in terms of a dynamic leadership and taking something that was a waste conveyance and completely underappreciated all the housing, everything else that was developed along this river was, it was the lowest piece of real estate you could buy, cheapest per square foot, everything else. And now it is the one of, one of the most expensive. So besides shade, what other benefit is there to having trees down by the river? Yeah, well, so obviously for the aesthetic, we are, have all witnessed the public recreation that's going on down on the river right now and that would be so much less appealing if there weren't trees and shade for for all of our recreators so that's a big impact and then also planting trees even in the urban areas to reduce the overall watershed um, runoff issues is a huge help to the water quality the silt and the sediment that happens in the river fly fishing because i've done a lot of fishing i've never fly fished ever in my life is it just because I've never been around it? But it seems like it's getting a lot more popular as of late. It seems like 20 years ago, nobody fly fish. Now it seems like everybody is, to me anyway. Is that the way it is or is that? Well, fishing in general has always been a popular sport. And we're recognizing, a lot of people are starting to recognize that fishing is one way that we can get out, get in contact with the outdoors. It's one thing that we can do to improve our quality of life. So we at the Division of Wildlife Resources recognize that wildlife provides for the quality of life for people. And, uh, and we use fly fishing and just fishing in general as one of those opportunities. It is a symbol of what Ogden has done, what it's becoming, and I cannot be more proud of the work that so many passionate people have put into this. A lot of work. I've seen video, they're pulling cars out and washers and dryers and all, all kinds of stuff out of the river. How do, you, how do you get a whole car in the river and no one knows about it, it just stays there? Well, you got the thick woods and nobody cares. You, you know, a couple of the quick stats for that, 2,500 tires were pulled out of that 1.1 mile of river that was restored here. So that would be, because I'm kind of dumb, make sure I'm following you, it helps with the erosion, right? When, when the water's running by, it doesn't just tear away the bank, and then you have no bank, right? Exactly. So the, so the leaves in the tree will filter that water and sort of slow it down as it hits the bank, and then the roots will also then absorb a lot of that water so that it's not running off into the river. And then you have a nice place to lean up against and take a nap while you're fishing, right? Exactly. I mean, who wants to fish in the hot sun? So how hard is fly fishing? It looks extremely difficult to me. Well, that's kind of a loaded question, but uh, there's, it is difficult if you make it difficult. There's definitely gateways into the sport. Um, we provide, as a, the Division of Wildlife provides gateway opportunities. You know, fishing is a very popular sport all over the nation, so there's plenty of opportunity to get into the sport and to learn the sport. Um, it's also a good way to get to know new people, build new relationships as you share knowledge with one another and stuff like that. So. There should not be a knowledge, should not be a barrier, or expertise should not be a barrier to fishing. Eight full cars, 15,000 tons of trash came out of that. And when you grow up as a, as a rail center during the height of the Industrial Revolution and everything else, rivers were waste conveyances. You open your back door, you put everything else out there and just wished it away. And the water would take it down river and it didn't matter at all. And now that we are recognized, I mean, just last week on Wednesday, this week on Wednesday, we're recognized by National Geographic Adventure as one of the top 10 emerging ski towns in North America. And that is because we have recaptured these really unique phenomenal resources and they've meant a ton for us. Okay, I have a question for you. Cause these other guys that walk around here, the, the, the division of, what is it? Um, the wildlife? Yeah, the, the, I wanna call them fish cops, but I don't know if they get offended when you call them that. So, but what would they call a person that works in your capacity? If you call them a fish cop, what would they call you? I don't like to throw around names for us. <laughs> I mean. Well, that's your chance, it could be a good one. They're, Tree what? The tree God. There you go. See? Or, well, tree hugger. Well, that has, that has a negative connotation as well, right? But well, hugger is maybe not what we necessarily want to be, but tree promoters, definitely. So it's just like with anything else. You start out easy and then you get a little harder and a little harder and a little harder as you go along. Is that? Right. Yeah. I mean, you start off basic. Maybe you start off in a flat water, a lake or a reservoir, somewhere where it's really easy and there's not a lot of trees to snag in, you know, so that in your back cast, you're not caught in a, caught in a tangle the whole time. 
That's, I was going to say, I, I, I fished the Ogden River several times, and it always seems like all I end up is catching the trees on the other side as I'm casting across. I'm really good at that. that I, I've said it before. I would look like Charlie Brown trying to fly a kite if I fly fished. They're a symbol for everything we're doing and for reasons people want to come and live and work and play in these environments. And it's been a phenomenal story. I, I'm, I'm happy to come talk about it, but uh, this is not something I've... We've got some really brilliant engineers and visionaries that have worked really, really hard to put all of this together. I am so happy to have them on my team and so proud to be affiliated with this community and everything that's happening here. We are leading the nation in terms of recapturing an environment and a community and, and making this a symbol of, of, of what matters. Clean air, clean water, live, work, and play, it's really important. You know, I have a friend, her name's Deanne. She's a tree hugger and she's proud of it. You know, I. I, I wear a lot of different hats in this division, and I, I, I love trees, and I love the benefits of trees, and I think that they are so important for so many aspects of our life, but there, there's definitely a time and a place for everything. A good balance. Yes, for sure. All right, well, hey, I'll let you get back to what you're doing, but thanks for talking with me. Thanks for talking. Thank you. Okay, so you can, you can add me to that list of people that's been caught in the trees in the Ogden River, but uh, that's just the nature of fly fishing sometimes. But depending on where you're fishing, there's a lot of different conditions. And in downtown, actually, in the Ogden River Restoration area, it's a lot more wide open. It really lends itself quite nicely to either the experienced or the beginner fly caster. Always something going on all year round in this town, correct? <laughs> it is, it is. <laughs> and, and it is phenomenally invigorating to be a part of that because we are... In the last 10 years, we have done so much and we are so recognized. I mean, two weeks ago, Forbes recognized Ogden City as one of the fastest 20 growing cities in the United States of America. And you're looking at the laundry list of the other internationally recognized cities that are on that and to have Ogden right in the middle of that is phenomenally invigorating and we are really, really proud of all everybody's doing here. This is not the effort of any one, two or three people. This is a community coming together in a really unique and dynamic way and we've had national attention on exactly what's happened because it's it's the community effort that that means so much all right i'm here with uh aaron hoskins and aaron somebody told me that uh you're you're, you're quite the fly fisherman i wouldn't go that far but i do it quite a bit i love it yeah um how long have you been fishing you know i i got into it last year and after I started, I couldn't stop. I, I probably went about 150 times last year on the Ogden, and hopefully I'll, I'll double that this year. So is there a nice fish in the Ogden River to be caught, or are they just all little planters? What do they got in there? Actually, there's a wild population of brown trout. We estimate in some reaches of the Ogden River, particularly in the upper reaches, there's up to 6,000 fish per mile. So the Ogden River, right through the middle of our community, is just filthy with fish. I mean, loaded with fish. That is, That number may not have much context for a lot of the viewers, but 6,000 fish is, <laughs> in, the fi in the fish world, that is a dense fishery, yeah. All right, so get on the Ogden River and do some fishing then. Absolutely, get on the Ogden River, get on the Weber River, get on Utah's rivers. Just get out there and do some fishing, buy a fishing license, support your rivers, come out to the film tour and support your local rivers, you name it, do it. All righty, well, I hey, appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you, man. All right, one more question for you, then I'll let you go. How, how many tires did you say was in the Ogden River they pulled out? How many? In just the section we reclaimed, 1.1 mile, 2,500 tires, which is amazing to me. I don't know how water flowed through that. <laughs> you know what it could have been? Remember a few years back in the late 80s, we had that big tire fire. Maybe they was throwing tires in the river to put them out. <laughs> <laughs> I, just, <laughs> I don't think our fire department would have done that. I got a lot of trust in them, but I agree. But with your camouflage hat on, I'm not wearing the fisherman colors and the... A hook and bullet guy, but it's it's been this this community is is so small but so dynamic in terms of how they've grabbed a hold of this and ran with it. It's so fun to be a part of this. A hundred bit. Do you do anything besides fish? I mean, are you a professional fisherman or oh, no? Not by by no means. No, uh, I work up at the barn golf course, and you know, it gives me an opportunity to run down there every night after we close up and throw the fly rod out there. Oh, that's good. You're already there, so you're not wasting gas driving anywhere, and it's, it's right on the Ogden River. Exactly. <laughs> and you know what? They, uh, as of recently, they did such a terrific 
they put so much effort into cleaning up that river, especially the new blue ribbon part of the Ogden from about Prairie Schooner and a mile down. And they've taken out, they've taken out 13 tons of garbage. And it's, it's fantastic. And they're gonna be planting some big fish in there this year. And you can go down and have a hell of a time. Hardy, I am here with Paul Thompson, Division of Wildlife. And Paul, can you tell me a little bit about what you're doing out here at the Egyptian Theater tonight? Well, we're here to uh, help out and to spread information about what we do at the fly fishing film tour. So, are, are you much of a fly fisherman yourself? Or? You know, I do. I get up to the Weaver probably about 50 days a year. So, you work, you work for the fishing game then, I'm assuming? I do. Yeah, I'm the fisheries manager in the Ogden office. So, we appreciate everything you guys are doing and being here, telling this story, because it is a national story that needs to be told. And... We, we do have people like National Geographic and Powder Magazine and, and Forbes and other people. And some of the people that still kind of live here are like, well, I don't know what's going on. I'm still just kind of living in my space, doing whatever. This is a national story. And I'm extremely proud to just be a, a bit player in it. So what's, what's the biggest fish you caught last year fly fishing? You know, the biggest fish I probably caught was, was on the Ogden and it was 21 inches. That's a pretty good sized fish for the Ogden River. Just brown. Oh, it was beautiful. It was terrific. So you, you throw them back or do you, do, you, do you enjoy eating them? I always throw back the browns. The browns are the, get the biggest. They're the hardiest fish. But I don't mind eating a rainbow or two. So do you get a lot of time to fish or are you just busy, 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 busy all the time? You hardly ever get any time to fish. Well, you know, we, we are pretty busy, but I always make some time. Either take a day off during the week or go up on the weekend. Take a day, you call in sick and go fishing? Yeah. Oh, that would suck if you're running one of your buddies while he's down fishing, though, wouldn't he? would not he be like, hey, I thought you were sick. Well, maybe I just don't say I'm sick. I just say I don't, I'm not coming in for the day. Oh, there you go. Yeah. See, because I would do something dumb like that. I'd call in sick. I'd tell people, oh, I'm going to be sick because I have something going on. And then I'd run into him downtown, and then I'd be in trouble. We don't have a job anymore. That's, that's how I do things. Well, I have some spots that people don't know about, so I can get away from people, too. I mean, you know, I'm glad to see it, too. I've lived in Ogden since 1986. I love this town. And, and people make, I get a lot of flag for that from some people. Oh, you live in Ogden. I love this place. Uh, part of the... I've, I've laughed about this a little bit, you know, we've, we've got a phenomenal place to live and I, I l chose to live here for a reason and when we've got these huge powder days and a lot of this other stuff that's going on and I go up to Snow Basin or Powder Mountain and what used to be all day powder shots and um, you know I could fish in my fishing hole all day everything else. Now I'm kind of fighting for room there. Man, man some people here are doing their jobs too well. <laughs> we need it. We need to kind of quiet them down a little bit, but it's it's a it's a secret that will not will not last. We live in a phenomenal place, and it, it's the natural resources, but it's the people that matter every bit as much. And I, I wouldn't I wouldn't live anywhere else. Right on. Well, hey, I really appreciate your time. Thank you, Thank you for talking so with me. Much appreciate it. So always throw the Browns back. Now is that just is that just personal preference, or is that something that they want you to do? Is that you know, it's just a, an unwritten thing for me, just because the browns can thrive, and I think they're the funnest to catch. They're the hardiest fish. So you want to keep them in there. You don't want to take them all out. Exactly. Leave them for the next guy. Exactly. All right, Mel. Hey, thanks for talking with me, and uh, let me wish you some good luck next year. Hey, thanks a million. Appreciate it. Can you, can you tell me about them spots so I can... Uh, maybe a little bit later we'll chat about that. I can just... I, uh, here's a question I could ask. When I was a kid, we'd be fishing all the time. Well, my dad would be fishing and he'd be throwing rocks and, and splashing in the river and he'd yell at me, you're going to scare the fish. Is there any truth to that? I mean, can fish really hear me yelling at the side of the bank and stuff? Well, if you're, if you're throwing rocks into the stream or lake, yeah, they'll, he'll hear that vibration when it hits. Uh, if you're above the surface and just yelling, I'm not sure if there's much truth to that. All right, I'm here with Kyle Jensen. Emily Roberts. And can you guys tell me a little bit about what it is that you're doing down here today? Um, we're here to attend the fly fishing film tour, and it's to benefit the Ogden fly fishing. So, dumb question, do you fly fish? I do. How long have you been doing that? Since I was about three. Really? At three years old, you're fly fishing? Come on, you're fudging that a little bit. My dad would catch the fish, and I would reel it in, so. <laughs> well, that's, that's not fishing, that's catching. Yeah. Your dad does all the fishing, and you just catch them. Yeah, it was pretty fun, though, so. That's a good system, though. Yeah, it works. It works for me. <laughs> I don't know if it works for him, but. This is my good side. Hang on. Right. <laughs> I don't have a good side. That's a. You get some makeup over here, please. <laughs> <laughs> a little shiny. Yes. 
All right, I'm here with... David Willis. Dave Willis, prima donna. That's who we're with, <laughs> trying to get all pampered up. Anyway, can you tell me just a little bit about what it is that you're doing down here today? I am down here to watch the uh, movie about the fly fishing. I'm also here to kind of support the community, support the people that are involved, have been involved in the river re restoration project, and frankly, to learn a little bit more about fly fishing, because it looks like something I would enjoy. If you're in a boat banging around, you're going to scare the fish away. So maybe just my dad got tired of hearing me bump my gums and wanted some quiet. He probably was trying to get you to be quiet. That's what it was. <laughs> more than likely. A lot of people do that. Not much luck. No. <laughs> I can kind of see that. I say, as you can tell, right? Yeah. All right. Well, hey, I appreciate your time. Thanks right, for talking no with problem. me. Enjoy yourself tonight. So uh, do you fish along the Ogden River quite a bit? Or? I actually never fish the Ogden River. I'm from Logan, Utah. I go to school up there. So I'm, I'm hoping to get down here, though, and fish down here. Yeah, you have to. I was just talking to one of the guys from the Department of Wildlife Services, and he says they have, like, in the Ogden River up, up top, there's, like, 6,000 fish per mile. So he's like, that's a bunch of fish to catch. Yeah, so that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Chances. That sounds like my car's gas mileage, 6,000 fish a mile. I don't know. <laughs> that's pretty good. Maybe. Yeah, I don't know. But all righty, man. Well, hey, I will uh, let you get back to doing what you're doing, but thanks right. for talking with me. Thank you. Thanks. Have a good night. I was just going to ask, do you fly fish at all? I don't, but I hope to win that rod and reel. And once I win that rod and wheel, reel in tonight's raffle, I will begin to be a fly fisherman. You're, you're pretty confident about winning that. You, you know someone running the raffle? or? No, I just feel like I'm, I don't know. Is, is that what confidence always, you know, helps? Yeah, confidence helps. you got to believe, right? Like the secret. You gotta, <laughs> That's what I've heard. Believe it, visualize it, and then it happens. All righty, I am here with... Joni Wall. And Joni, can you tell me a little bit about what it is that you're doing down here today? I'm coming to watch the fly the fly fishing festival. Yes. So obviously the Ogden River's come quite a ways in just the past few years, right? It has. I was uh, at the event the very start started off with uh, Robert Kennedy Jr. So it's great to see how far it's come. All right, I'm here with Justin Anderson. And Justin, besides besides watching the fly fishing the fly fishing film festival, I think is what they call it. That's a lot to say. But besides that, what are you doing down here tonight? Well, we're raising money for the Ogden River restoration. We finished it in 2012, and we're raising money to help maintain it and keep it fresh and keep it nice and beautiful. All right, so do you do any regular fishing, like just bait fishing, I guess? I don't know. Not really, not much fishing at all. I don't have a lot of experience. I haven't had a lot of time, frankly. I work a lot, so, but I want to begin fishing. It's a lot of fun. I've never fly fished before, but maybe I need to try it now because it seems like a lot of people are. Yeah, it seems like a very popular sport. We have an ideal situation here. The Ogden River is now a blue ribbon uh, fisher, fishing river, um, which means it's one of the, the top fishing rivers in the, in the state of Utah, which is a state known for its fishing. And so I think we're gonna have a lot of success drawing people here, bringing people in to enjoy the fishing, uh, and enjoy the river restoration project. All righty, cool. Hey, I appreciate your time. Thanks for talking with me. Welcome. And about how long ago was that? Because I've, se I've seen the video and they're playing it here now, but how long ago was that done? I want it was in 07 when he came. So it's been, what, six years? Yeah, don't ask me to do math. I don't want to count on my fingers on the TV. That would... <laughs> Higher mathematics, yes. So, yeah. So just the, the, the part that a lot of people have been talking about, that, that one section they've done all the work on, is, is, it a, is it expensive to maintain that? I mean, how does that work? Well, we're working on having volunteers and doing an Adopt-A-River section through there, but it's nice having some money that we can help support them as they do these things, and we can keep some plants fresh, we can keep some beautiful flowers and some other things, and if things do get damaged, we can help replace those things along the way. Alrighty, I'm here with... Maddie. And Maddie, somebody told me you're somewhat of a, a celebrity. Is, is that a good word to use? I guess, yeah. And what is it that you're uh, famous for? Uh, I'm a junior casting champion at Henry Sport Foundation in Island Park, Utah. I, uh, in Island Park, Idaho. Idaho, I was gonna say, I don't think there's an Island yeah, Park, there's Utah. one in Utah. I'm not like good on geography, but. <laughs> Me either. <laughs> is it weird because I watch the video and I see the areas they're working on and then I'm like, hey, I've been down there before. It looks totally different. So it's, it's kind of cool they have that record of it that you can see what it looked like before they started and now they've. Definitely, it's amazing. I mean, we live in an amazing community. So, but that, it's wonderful to see how far it's come. Yeah. It is. It's, it's really great. So, all right. Well, hey, I appreciate you talking with me. Thank you. You're very welcome. Thank you. Yeah, that's got to be tough. You guys do all that work and all that time and all that effort, and then somebody comes along and breaks something up or paints it. That's got to be frustrating as can, as can be. It is frustrating, but instead of getting frustrating, we're just going to fix it. We're going to keep it beautiful, and we're just going to keep moving on because it's nice to have it fixed now because it, it really was awful, and it was really ugly and now it's a jewel running through the city and we want to keep it that way 
So two times. So how do you get into something like how, how does that work? I mean, you like have a washer on the end of a rod and you throw it, or how does it work? Um, you just it's like you just have targets and you just fly fish and you try to get as many hits as you can. And I won that year after year after year. Very good. So how are you? At, you're great at casting. How are you at fishing? I'm good. I'm really good. My grandpa taught me so. Alrighty, I am here with Perry Huffaker. And Perry, somebody told me that uh, if someone was looking to volunteer some time down at the river, that they need to get a hold of you. They do. They do. Uh, we've got all kinds of projects, whether they're cleaning up, helping to plant species of, of small trees and shrubs, or just doing some overall maintenance, making sure that that river stays the way that it is now, and maybe even improving in the future. A great way of doing it is get involved with Make a Difference Day because we'll be down there on Make a Difference Day coming up in May. Um, it's where the city puts on, they do a freshen up in the entire city. But specifically, we, if you want to come down to that area, you can get involved and we'll have activities down there for people to do. Very good. All right, well, hey, you're probably busy, so I'll let you get back to doing what you're doing, but thanks for talking with me. Thank you. <laughs> so, so, you're good, so you're not like scared of the fish, you don't want you're like, oh, I not, don't touch it. No, nope, I touch them, yep. So. Do you, do you eat them? No, we, uh, we throw them back. Yes, good answer. I was going to say, because that's not, that's not, well, I mean, there's people like fish, and I guess that's yeah. great, but I'm not one of them people. No, I'm not either. <laughs> I'll throw them back. <laughs> All righty. Well, hey, I really appreciate you talking with me. Thank you for your time. Thanks. <laughs> do you have volunteers like I can sit in the shade and drink a soda? Is, is that something I could volunteer for? Sure. It sounds like you're really good at that. <laughs> I'm great at pointing and barking out orders. I should be a supervisor because I have no knowledge of anything, but I can bark orders. You sound just like me. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty, well, hey, the, the show's getting ready to start, but uh, I appreciate you talking with me. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night. Alrighty, folks, hey, that's going to do it for me. Thanks a lot for watching. If you get a chance, go down, check out the river. All kinds of stuff happening. <laughs>